another video for you guys. This one isn't about firewalls, routers, or access points, or cameras, or anything like that. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of the tools that I use the most when I'm running cables and terminating and uh, setting up networks for clients. I've had a tool that I've been using for the last five years that I paid $100 for, but it retailed for about $600 and I kind of scored. I'm talking about my Ideal Networks tool. When I run wires and do set up cameras and stuff like that, I verify every cable. Now this tool, VDV2 Plus, has been the best tool I've ever used. It lets me know if I've got a cable on either end broken, or a non-crimped cable properly, or a punch down not working properly, and it's been a very, very good tool. However, there are a couple things in here that I needed that it didn't do. So I was online searching for new tools, and I came across a tool that's down here below me. And I want to show you guys that tool. Now, the reason I was going to go out and buy a net alley, but my budget for three grand was way out of uh, park. I can't afford a $3,000 tool for something that I would have to save up for many, many months, maybe two years to buy. So that's why I stopped and I was using this thing. But then it came to the point where I'm using shielded cables and I need to test PoE because when you set up a camera and it doesn't work or something like that, you need to verify the end that does need to work and you need to find out where it is, where the error is. Just. This didn't do that. There's a new version that does that, but I was like, nah. So surfing around the internet, I came across this tool down here and I messaged the guys on LinkedIn saying, hey, this is a new tool. I don't see anything online. What is this tool about? And they said, oh, it's very new to the market. It is a tool that competes with a lot of other devices that are low end, like these. I mean, Ideal has some really high end tools, but some people just do basic networking, basic testing, and they don't want to go out and buy a $3,000 tool for just doing basic tools. So I messaged them again and I said, hey, um, can you give me more info? And apparently on my LinkedIn page, I have my YouTube channel linked. And the guy said, I'm going to do you better. I'm going to phone you. We're going to chat which we did, and I'm going to send you a device. Now, I don't get to keep the device, which is fine. I, I don't expect a free device. But you get to keep it for a month or two to play with it, take it to work, test it, play with it, and then show me what it is. So that's exactly what I've been doing. The product I'm talking about today is the softening device. This guy in here is a handheld network tester that does all the things that I want and fits my budget. I will be buying one of these devices. Now they make a couple different different versions. They make, the one they sent me was the low end model and then they go up to a higher model. In my network bag, I have my network tester, have to have that. I won't even go on site, you better even don't have it. And I have some other tools that were sent to me that I use from True Cable and I like this. And then I have my other tool that I cut cable with. So this tool will be my other replacement tool from this because it has all the features that I want. So today, I'm gonna to show you this new device. Very, very nice device by, by chance. The one thing I didn't like about it when I was playing with it, it was kind of slippery, but then I found out they make a case, like a cell phone case, like a rubber uh, silicone case that goes over top of it. In the case when you buy it, you get eight of these, which are the network testing modules. They have lights on them, tell you what's going on it. And it does shielding. A lot of stuff, well, not a lot of my stuff, but most of my stuff that I do is not shielded. But there's times where I had to put shielding on cable out there. And I was like, I don't know if I have that shielding going. So I had to use a, a multimeter to test it to see if it had continuity. This device meets that and I really needed that. So. Has, the, has eight of these little tiny modules, right? You could put them on there. And I believe that when you test this and do your wiring mapping, it will tell you what module you have. I only have one, so I couldn't really test that. Might see if I can get a couple modules sent to me to do that in another video. It also has a network tester. It's kind of rattly because there's a battery in there. It comes with a strap, right? The power supply, 
I haven't really needed to use the power supply because the battery life on this thing is amazing. I charged it once and I've had it for three weeks and I've been using it and I'm down to like 92%. So, I mean, pretty good. This is the device I'm talking about. This is the Soviting Link Expert and I believe the model in this one was the TP. So the TP version is the lower end version and then they have a couple other versions. This device fits in my hands and I got tiny little hands, right? This device will be my next tool that I use forever. Very, 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 very good. Budget friendly and a lot of features built into this thing. And I really like it. So I'm gonna be buying one of these devices. Like I said, it's got this little pamphlet that I didn't even bother reading because I used the PDF online. Okay, comes with a nice hard shell case. So when you buy yours, it could be stored into that. I'll probably use a different one because I want a little bit smaller of a case, but I'll probably customize something like a little Pelican case because the price that you pay for these things and you want them to last long. And it, if you want a smaller case, probably use a Pelican case. We'll put this off to the side. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'll compare the size of my this device compared to this device, right? This one's got a nice touch screen that's very, very responsive and very accurate where you put your fingers. This one has no touch screen. It just has buttons on the front of it. Put this over here. When it turns on, it says Optimize Softing Link Expert TP. It's kind of like a cell phone. I believe it uses Android, but it's probably customized for that on there. It's even got a little light on the top. So if you're in like a dark room and you need to find a patch cable and stuff like that in the uh, patch panel, push the little light, the light comes on so you can see. It actually works really well. Um, PoE on this device, awesome. I'll show that in the video because I have a PoE switch. It's nice because when you're putting up access points, which I do a lot of, or cameras, I can plug this in where that camera or the device is and it'll say, yeah, I got power. Or, no, I don't have power. And then you can start troubleshooting. So here's the device. No, it's not gonna work that well. But anyways, I'm gonna take some screenshots and I'll put that into my videos here. So when you see the device, it, does, it comes online. So what we can do is we can do auto test or we can actually pick our tests. I'm gonna pick our tests. Now this one only does copper or no Wi-Fi or fiber. The M3 will do fiber and copper and 10 gigabit. This one only does one gig from what I've been told and what I can try. So you only see an ethernet port on the top, right? So we're gonna click copper. We have for features in this device is wire mapping, tone generator, which we'll use this little guy, right? So it's got a toner built into it and it sends a tone down the wire for you. It does a discovery, PoE, link blink. What's link blink? Link blink is if you are in another room and you can't find where the cable is on the other end plugged into the switch because the person that plugged in the wires or did the wiring didn't label it you can actually push link blink and if all the ports are linked up in the switch it'll start blinking so you can see what it is very handy tool mine doesn't do that it's got dhcp so if you plug this into a network i'll show you a screenshot it will give you all the information it also has ping which is cool because you can ping to see if the port that you have is getting out to the network or out of the um, out of the network or ping another device on the network. Very, very handy. Duplicate IP, I haven't played with that because I don't have any duplicate IPs on my network, but we'll, maybe I'll try that in a second video. Trace route, it'll trace route all the network. Very, very handy, okay? So we got nine things built into this little device, but this can't do it. So the reason why I really like this device, I can do more things on site than I can with this in my hand than I can with that and a bunch of other tools. So I could just bring this on site and do a whole bunch of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test a cable. We're gonna test a cable. I need the module. This little guy. I have a manufactured one meter? one meter, and you can tell it's shielded, right? There's a shield on the end there, okay? I'm gonna also grab a non-shielded cable. Let's use the cable that I just made for the video. So I make a lot of cables. 
I'm gonna curl this up so it doesn't look so... Actually, no, I'm not. I'm gonna put the end on here. So as we can see where I was going with that is this is not shielded. This is just a normal cable, right? Cat 5E outdoor rated cable. I put an end on it to test it. Okay, I'm gonna put that on here. Let's test this. Screen comes on when you touch it. We're gonna click wire map, okay? And then what we're gonna do is push green. I'll take some screenshots. On the end, we get our device saying all the pairs are connected and there's no shorts or any breaks. The very bottom light on here will show shielding when it's, when it's working, okay? So on here, on the screen, it tells us quick test, 4.4 meters long. I don't have a measuring tape with me, so I'm not gonna measure that, but it looks accurate to me. The only thing on here it says that it doesn't work or is, is not passing is the shielding, but you could turn that on and off. So in the settings, we can go no shield and it won't test for that. If we click shielded and we push okay, and then we test this, it says shield not connected, fail. I'll put a screenshot here. So now what we need to do is plug a shielded cable on and see what it does, okay? Now it's a sh small, short shielded cable because I didn't feel like going outside in the rain today and making a shielded cable, but that's fine. So we'll plug in our shielded nice cable that I bought and we'll try again. So it says shielded not connected. We'll push OK and we'll try retry. The size is going to change, but it passes. And here's a pass, what it looks like. If you look on the bottom of the... Of the um, Screenshot that I show you, it'll say pass. You'll also notice, sorry, I have face detection turned on so it detects my face, but as you can see, the very bottom light for S, for shield, is lit up. So this cable passes. Now those are critical when you're running cables and doing stuff, right? Now we can test the shield with just one device. Okay, so another thing we wanna try. Let's plug this into my network here and see what the next one does on the list here. So what do we got? We have tone generator. Um, we could try that. I'm just gonna put this in here. Try tone generator. We'll go all pairs, because we wanna see, we don't know which pair is gonna be working or not, because maybe we have a dead cable and we're trying to tone and ch check stuff. So we're gonna push okay. Now it's putting out a tone. You guys will hear that, right? We could also sniff the end of this cable. Right? That works pretty well. That's pretty handy. Okay. I'm going to stop that because I don't want to hear the tone anymore. What's the next one we want to try? PoE. I did plug it into my PoE switch. So now I'm going to try this and see what it does. Let's click PoE. Now it says on the screen, we'll take a screenshot before I do the Let's push test. Running PoE test. And it does click because it's got relays inside of here, so just so you guys know that. Nice. So I'm gonna take a screenshot and show you guys these settings, but I'm also gonna read them out. So it came back with a test mode. So we got mode A, PoE detected on pins one, two, three, and six. Good. Polarity, reverse polarity, one to two negative, three to six positive. Type. 802.3AT PoE plus. Sweet. And I bet you if I plugged it into my other um, ingenious switch, my favorite switches right now, um, it does PoE plus plus. So it's probably going to do um, another one. Maybe we'll try that. But let's get through the list here. Power class four. Max rated power draw at PD is 25.5 that aligns with the um, ingenious specs. 54.0 volts at min load, okay? 52.7 volts at max load. So it actually has a load in here, it tests that. It's pretty sweet. All right, well, let's try and see what it does at 2.5 gig. Not sure if it's gonna um, handshake at that properly, but let's try that. I'm pretty sure this one only does one gig, but that's fine. All this stuff, I'm not bandwidth testing on this device. 
Or you'd use another tool with that. Maybe the MEM3 does that. I can't really tell, I don't know. Okay, so it's plugged in. Let's try this. Let's try it again. This one is a little bit different. So, PoE test. I'll put a screenshot here for you, hold on. PoE mode detected on pins one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Interesting, I just learned something there. That's kind of cool. Uh, polarity pairs, one to two and three to six are reversed. Pairs four, five, seven, eight. No, that's what it says. Type 802.3 BT, sweet. Four PoE, power class six. Max rated power draw at PD is 51 watts, so 51 watts per port. 54.7 volts min load and 53.5 volts max load. That's pretty sweet. I like that. Um, okay, next test. Oh, cancel. Stopping test. We did hear it click. Let's try Link Blink. Now, I'll have to take a picture of that with my phone or maybe a little video so you can see it because my camera is mounted on my desk. But let's try that. Let's go Link Blink. And I'm going to select it to be one gigabit. Okay, I'll take a picture and show you guys what it looks like. Then I'll make a little video for you. It's blinking, as we can see in our tool. Here, I'll move the tool sideways here so we can see it a little bit better. Port four. Sweet. So we have in our list, DHCP status, complete, good. IP address, 172.16.10.115. It gives us our subnet mask of 255.255.2550. It's a flat network for testing, pretty basic. Our DNS servers, 172.16.10.1, sweet. Least time, that's a good idea too, I like that. Two hours. DHCP server IP address, so where it's getting its IP address, 172.16.10.1. And the response time was 10.25 milliseconds. That's some pretty good information for us to know when we're on site and doing tests and stuff. Okay. Well, I would have to say, so far, I'm very comfortable with this tool, and I would definitely be using this tool in my network bag. Now, I'm going to see if they can send me a couple more of these modules. Maybe I'll do a second video. This video can be good for you guys to ask me some questions on this uh, device. Do all those tests you guys want me to try, because I'm going to have this for another month. Um, if you have any questions, don't be afraid. Ask me. As you can see, the device is... I'm going to plug this cable, because that cable is stiff. As you can see, it's a nice device. The one thing I really didn't only like about this, but I mentioned that at the beginning of the video, is that it's slippery. And if you're out running cable and you got dusty hands and stuff with this, this could be slippery. So I did ask Tom about that, and he said there's a case you could buy. It's just like one of the rubber silicone cases. I do like that it's got that light in the top, because I have been in um, network rooms where there's not that much light, or the rack is... Uh, in the is not lit up in the rack and you can push this light to see i mean that's pretty that's pretty pretty handy i like that so if you guys have any questions i will put a link to the product down below i will also put some uh skews in there for the products you can buy now this price of this device let me just see here um i believe this device was eight or $900. Let me just see here. I could be wrong. Hold on. So the device that I have, which is the Link Expert TP, the low end model, for $1,000 US, 1045 That's men manufacturer suggested retail price. For a thousand bucks for this, the M3 version does Wi Fi and fiber. So you can see that it's got an SFP port in here, and that does SFP plus and fiber linking and stuff like that. The Wi-Fi is a little dongle that goes on the side of it and that does testing and stuff like that. I can't elaborate too, too much on that. Maybe I can get them to send me the M3 model, wink, wink, and then we can try that. But for now, I'm gonna leave the video at this. If you guys have any questions or comments or want anything for me to try and do a video on or um, anything like that, 
let me know, and uh, we'll go from there. For now, I'm going to clean up this desk because i got stuff all over the place, and I'll leave you guys at that. You guys have a great day.